The voice of God proud our hearing. Of God Together they invite us down into the waters of life where the spirit flows. Maybe. Okay, good. Um, would you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, When Jesus Came to Jordan? Now, you may want to look it up in the UMH. It's number 252. Chris and I were discussing this morning of whether or not the congregation actually knew this hymn. Um, so he's going to play it through once, and then we're going to sing it through, okay? Um. Let's sing together. Thank you. 
Some of you I didn't see last week, so it's good to be in worship today, and we have several people with us who haven't been here for a while, and some folks that are here for the first time, and so just welcome to everyone who is here and for all of our members who join on Zoom. I want to start with a very happy announcement. Layla, you're turning 16 tomorrow. We got to head over there. Oh, yes. help my mom with the reception for him. I can't believe it. That is so exciting. And Graham is turning 12 this week. Lalofi, I'm so sorry. Your children are getting older. I, I know. I'll cry with you after church. We'll, I'll get some Kleenex. We'll... <laughs> So for other announcements, I want to say uh, very happy to share that Kathy Meyer is doing better, which is really an answer to prayer. And uh, Steve is here today, so he can answer more of your questions, but I'm glad Steve's here so he can do that. I want to mention that uh, Ronnie Taylor's son, Matt, is in the hospital with pneumonia. No COVID, but so she's asking for prayers. And her cousins, Becky and Phil, do have COVID. And then I want to mention today that the flowers are for Eric. Uh, today is his final day with us, which uh, makes me very sad, but we're just so grateful for the time that he's been with us. And I want to say a little bit more about that. Um, I, I know it's hard to hear in the fellowship hall, so I'm just going to do it in worship. When Eric came to us, you may recall, that's when I was here only one Sunday a month, and we had the interns, we had our rotating interns. And so... I really didn't work with Eric all that much pre-pandemic. And then when the pandemic started and uh, remember Brogan and Blair did a lot of the videos and did all of that and uh, Eric wasn't too involved with that. But then July 1, I was here and uh, trying to decide what to do. And I had visited a couple of churches on Zoom and I really loved it. Like before the pandemic, I couldn't imagine worship on Zoom. When the pandemic started, Zoom suddenly seemed like such a great idea, and particularly for this church. This church really likes to connect with each other and be together, and you can do that more on Zoom than you can uh, just watching a video, right? So lo and behold, I was thrilled to discover that Eric had all the skills that I didn't have, all the knowledge I didn't have, and he was more than willing to step into a new role. He'd been our music director, but he became our chief technician. And it's been um, a time where we have really had to every single week sort of reinvent worship and reinvent what we were doing. And I'm just so grateful for all the ways um, Eric made himself available. You may remember that first Christmas I came in here in the sanctuary, because really I just felt God telling me that you all needed to see the sanctuary. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And Eric figured out the technology and Jim was very helpful as well. I will, I will remind you because this is, I'm gonna whine about this till the end of my life. It was so cold in here. <laughs> was so cold but I knew it was the right thing to do and 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 just to have that special connection and I'm just so grateful that Eric made it work and then we've had such beautiful beautiful special music uh Eric's voice is just so gorgeous so beautiful I'm very glad he and Layla are singing together today 
We also have been blessed by Eric's many, many friends. So when Chris suddenly couldn't play for us, uh, Eric found uh, all the substitutes and he's had so many special musicians come in that that's been just wonderful. Um, he has had a special relationship with Chris and so we've been very grateful for that. I also am just grateful that any idea I've had, Eric's figured out how to make it work. So that first Lent, um, I wanted to do the road to Jerusalem. And so he came up with the videos. And then on his own, he came up with um, something that I think everybody liked the most, which was when he'd play a video and you'd guess where it was from. And this, I found out how well-traveled this church is. And so that was a lot of fun. And we just enjoyed doing it so, so much. And, uh, and I remember, because I love music so much, so there would be times I would build a service around a particular piece of music. And Eric was just a wonderful partner with that. So we're just really grateful. And we send them with our love and our gratitude. There is a basket in the back if you want to give a love offering. And we are going to gather in the fellowship hall. And there will be cake. So let us uh, continue our time of worship together. Scripture for this morning is Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At the moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see you all at God's temple today. Uh, today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany, and January 6th was the, the day of Epiphany. And Epiphany is the day Christians remember the coming of the Magi to visit Jesus, bring their gifts. But after the late first century, as Advent developed it as a season of baptismal preparation in addition to Lent, Epiphany became associated with baptism. For this reason, Epiphany is the season that the Christians remember both the Magi's visitation baby Jesus and Jesus' baptismal, baptismal uh, moment by John the Baptist. And today, I want to focus more about the moment of Jesus' baptism. Today's text begins with Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. But the first half of Matthew chapter 3, which depicts the appearance of John the Baptist and his ministry, must also be examined together so that we can understand Jesus' Jesus' baptism more deeply today. First, what kind of person was John the Baptist? We remember John as the one who prepared for Jesus' coming and the one who baptized Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, who we see together today, was not just a person who waited for Jesus Christ with vague weight or excitement. John the Baptist was a person who put everything down and went to the wilderness with eating wild honey and locusts and thoroughly preparing for Jesus' coming. The prophet Isaiah also described John the Baptist as a voice cries out in the wilderness then what kind of place is the wilderness? A place where life is difficult to exist, 
a lonely place with no one is the wilderness. And it was John's life and calling to shout out the Lord's coming in the wilderness where no one listened and no hope. Sometimes God makes us come out into the wilderness. Even if we stand alone in the wilderness, we must not lose hope. It is because you can experience God's power more deeply at the most vulnerable moment, which is in the wilderness. In order to fulfill the calling that God gave, John went to the wilderness along the Jordan River, which right next to Bethany and nor northeast of Jerusalem. In the wilderness, John shouted and shouted, Jesus is coming with all his life. Then as stories about him began to spread little by little to near cities, and people who were interested in him gathered one by one toward him. The loud echo from the wilderness even resonated with the spirit of countless people living in distant cities. And they had to move their steps to the wilderness to hear the loud echo closely. If they stay and sit at home, they couldn't hear the sound closely. Is the story about the John the Baptist true? People had to go to the wilderness in order to experience it themselves, not through others. In the wilderness, they heard the living word of God. They repented and they were baptized and they were able to prepare Jesus' coming with John the Baptist. Dear brothers and sisters, today's scripture can also be applied to us. Comfort, familiar, habitual religious life does not deepen our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is difficult to have a direct relationship with Jesus unless we intentionally reach out to him to meet him in person. And oftentimes, Jesus calls us to come out to the wilderness to meet us and speak to us. To listen to Jesus' voice and his will, we need to go out there where Jesus is, even though he is in the wilderness. In order to understand God more deeply, in order to live with the gospel of Jesus Christ with joy, in order to receive blessings beyond our situations of life, we must move into wilderness. What does the wilderness mean to us? It is not a comfortable place. It is not a familiar place. It is not a place that easily maintains. Rather, it is an uncomfortable place place that reveals our sins that we want to hide, and a place where tears and patience are. This is the wilderness. In order to experience God's grace and Jesus' guidance, we must first be free from habitual religious life, which is deeply rooted, rooted in our life without being aware of it. No more neglecting our spiritual laziness and indolence, but we need to get up from the comfortable seat and move forward. Recently, because of the COVID-19, food delivery culture has developed it the most actively. So when I look at my phone, there are multiple, multiple delivery app in there, such as Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. Moreover, there are another type of delivery culture has developed in the COVID-19 era. It is worship delivery culture or sermon delivery culture. Just few clicks with your fingers at home, worship is delivered to you. 
God's word will be delivered to you and praise will be delivered to you. However, in today's text, it is clear. If you want to hear the word of God more closely, come out to the wilderness. But today, I don't want to say our online worship service or Zoom is not, not it, it is not, it is not meaningless, but it is meaningless. But I want to focus on we need to keep our heart, heart, even though we are in worship, worshiping our at home. In today's text, even Jesus came out to the wilderness to get baptized and listen to the word of God. Jesus was the one who did not have to be baptized because he was God himself. Nevertheless, Jesus came to the wilderness and was baptized before he began his ministry. Also, if we look at Matthew chapter 4, which is following our today's text, it shows that after Jesus Christ was baptized and received the word of God, he entered the deeper wilderness and overcame the temptation of Satan. Jesus was the one who needed no preparation and no training of his ministry. But Jesus Christ showed us an example of faith. Jesus told us through his life that if we want to be used by God and want to meet God, we must go out to the wilderness. If we want to be true Christians, and if we want to shine the light of Jesus on the world and light up the darkness, we must first come out of familiar places and go out into the wilderness where tensions and uncomfortable or even fears are. I've read a newspaper article that talks about how to deliver live fish in fresh. When delivery company delivers a live fish, many fish, many fish often die. A lot of research has been done to solve this problem. Methods such as increasing the size of a tank, lowering the temperature with uh, cold ice, and in injecting fresh, fresh air and water seem to work, but they did not mean, mean much. But surprisingly, surprisingly, the way to reduce the death rate of live, uh, live fish was to put their natural enemy together in the tank. So when the octopus, the natural enemy of live fish, was put into the tank, to, tank together, the live fish continued to struggle not to be eaten, so it did not die, but it also began to swim vigorously. Being comfortable, staying in a safe place does not make our spirit healthier. Rather, in uncomfortable places and places where we have a lot to care about, we can be closer to God and get a healthier spiritual life as Christians. After Jesus was baptized through John, Jesus' ministry began in earnest. Until before, he was a time, it was a time of preparation. But from then on, it was a time to heal the sick, raise the dead, and spread the gospel of heaven in earnest. For Jesus, the place of the wilderness and the place of baptism was an opportunity to take a leap forward. As you see, today's sermon title is Inflection Point of Life. And could you please show a PowerPoint slide with graph, please? If you see the, this graph, graph, it is a little bit complicated to explain, but if you see the graph, the inflection point is the point of the curve where the cur uh, curvature, 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 curvature changes each sign. And it is a point where the function changes from being concave, concave downward to convex, concave upward. 
at first, the growth seems to stop and then decline. But then passing through the inflection point, the decline turns back into growth. That's what the inflection point does. For Jesus Christ, the baptism by John, the place of temptation in the wilderness was the place of this inflection point. When we decided to get out from the comfortable and familiar place and move into the wilderness to meet God more closely, at first time, we can feel the spiritual stagnation or declining. However, eventually we will achieve greater growth because of our experience in the wilderness with God. Jesus wanted to teach us this spiritual truth and he wants us to live with what we learn through Jesus' life. It is the same thing that the church has to focus on. The church should not be a community that seeks only comfort and familiarity, but a community that sometimes needs uncomfort, uncomfort and patience, which is a wilderness-like community. Repentance and baptism must occur consistently in the church. The true church is the church where the repentance is and where the word of God is and where follows God's will only. I pray that our church will be just like this. Dear brothers and sisters, as time passed, we came to an era where believing in Jesus became so comfortable and the term Christians became too light. Nevertheless, I bless our church to be a church that does not compromise with the world. I deeply pray that our church will achieve amazing spiritual recovery and live forward by not giving up the truth, even though it is difficult to walk in the wilderness. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, thank you for giving us new year for each of us and for our church. Oh God, in this 2023, we want to leave and get up from the place with comfort and familiarity. God, please always be with us and give us strength when we walk in the wilderness and help us to grow and live forward spiritually through our experiencing and training in the wilderness so that help us to see the inflection point in our life and in our church in jesus name we pray amen I feel humbled today. Um, it's always wonderful to sing with Layla or to hear Layla sing. Um, I've uh, watched Layla grow in these last few years and just seen how her, her spiritual influence on me uh, has been amazing. Uh, this week we were rehearsing this song, which all of you know, and I asked Layla, she was having some trouble with where to breathe or to understand where where the line was going. And I said, well, like always, what are we talking about? And her first, what did you say first? What are we talking about in the song? Jesus. Jesus, yay. <laughs> um, but specifically what? What are we talking about? Um, how Jesus is here to protect us our whole life. Our whole life, right? And in this... This is my motto for ministry is that as Pastor Jay has talked about, like in our Christianity, sometimes we can become cold or comfortable. And I remind myself every day and I remind Layla 
when everything is going wrong, when anything is happening, the first thing that you should ask for is Jesus.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly God, we give you thanks and praise that in your mercy, you brought us to baptism and there gave us Jesus' holiness in exchanging for our sin and impurity. We pray, pray for the sick, those who are, who are disabled, those in hospital, those facing death. Show them the light of the gospel, provide helpers and carer and medical resources and heal both body and soul. We also pray for the baptized people of God that we may hang on to your promises in truth, true faith especially when we experience the wilderness of sin and evil within, the temptations and trials from outside. Strengthen us with your Holy Spirit so that Jesus' victory may be our victory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please all rise for the closing hymn. Let's sing together. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord for a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords to a life of love in action. Help us rise and
Jay reminded us this morning that sometimes we are called to go out in the wilderness, that sometimes we are called to go out of our comfort zones and go into places that challenge us. May we be faithful when we are so called. And may we also be confident, confident that when we are called to go to those uncomfortable places, that Jesus goes with us. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.